Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Next Gen, Walmart begins drone delivery across the U.S. UAvionics to undertake long-range UAS flights at Vantis location. And let's make a deal, Russia amenable to trading stolen satellites for Soyuz parts. And I'm your host, Holland Lee. Welcome to the Aero News Network's Airborne Next Gen Program, a weekly news program covering the next generation of flight, from electric power to vertical lift, uncrewed vehicles, and everything in between. Let's get into today's stories. Walmart begins drone delivery across the U.S. Walmart has expanded its burgeoning drone delivery program, capping off 2022 with the last of its ambitious expansion plans. Heading into 2023, the company operates 36 drone delivery hubs across seven states, including Arizona, Arkansas, Florida, North Carolina, Texas, Utah, and Virginia. The rollout is assisted by a series of vendors, turning unused areas around stores into a turnkey drone-specific airfield, launching UAVs with small, sub-10-pound parcels to nearby customers. Throughout the year, the company completed more than 6,000 deliveries to customers, often making their shipment in as little as 30 minutes. The most popular items? Walmart's house brand cookies and cream ice cream, two-pound bags of lemons, ready-made rotisserie chicken, Red Bull, and bounty paper towels. The company notes that more than 85% of the stock in the average Walmart neighborhood market, their grocery-only storefront, meets the 10-pound weight and volume requirements for drone delivery. Last year's expansion is just the start, with more than 4,700 stores within reach of 90% of the population. Quote, I'm incredibly proud of our team for creating the largest drone delivery footprint of any U.S. retailer and providing customers with an incredibly fast and innovative option for delivery, end quote, said Vic Gopalakrishnan, Vice President, Innovation and Automation, Walmart U.S. And after the break, Strato Launch completes second captive carry flight test. Throughout the globe, Piper Aircraft, has hand-selected the very best in company representation, service, and support. From first inquiry to acquisition to product support, Piper Aircraft ownership is seamless and worry-free. Piper Aircraft authorized dealers, factory trained, factory connected. Skyleader Aircraft offers a lineup of the most powerful, durable, and efficient light sport aircraft in the industry. From trainers to roomy cockpits for long hauls, Skyleader has an aircraft for you. And the best part? They're in your budget. Skyleader's base prices are set low to give you room to customize your aircraft to your needs, desires, and wallet, allowing you to put your money where it matters to you most. Visit flyskyleader.com today to learn about our aircraft, customization options, and chat with the team. Welcome back. And now for some shorter stories in our Next Gen Minute. Strato Launch completes second captive carry flight test. On January 13, 2023, at 1451 PST, the Strato Launch Rock and Talon A rose as one from the Mojave Air and Spaceport, climbed to an altitude of 22,500 feet, and remained aloft for six hours, the giant aircraft's longest sortie to date, before returning to Mojave and landing without incident. By way of such carefully orchestrated captive carry tests, Strato Launch is establishing the foundation for a series of Talon A drop tests slated to commence later this year. 5G Airworthiness Directive on the books for February 2024. Carriers will need to equip their aircraft with 5G C-band tolerant altimeters by February 2024, according to AD 2022-01379. The newly issued AD supersedes 2021-2312, which applies to all transport and commuter category aircraft equipped with a radio altimeter. The older AD requires revision of the limitation section of the aircraft's POH to incorporate limitations from operators from using radio altimeter data in the presence of 5G C-band interference identified by NOTAM. Carbon Helios Anti-Icing System Passes Muster Carbon Aerospace finished their icing tunnel testing of the upcoming Helios Ice Protection System. The system uses a heated graphite layer embedded in a thermoplastic composite leading edge, harnessing the material's improved thermal conductivity to prevent ice buildup in flight. Thanks to the increased efficiency of graphite, the system comes up to operating temperature significantly faster than legacy ice protection systems, reducing wasted energy use. The Helios system remains in testing, with a release date to be published once it moves further into development. The Vertical Flight Society boasts new corporate members. The Vertical Flight Society says that things are running better than ever, thanks in large part to a field of quickly proliferating eVTOL interest. 
The society said that it added a net gain of 20 corporate members in the last year, bringing its total corporate body to 183 in all. That growth comes from the seemingly endless parade of electric and sustainable flight vertical takeoff aircraft manufacturers, a bonanza of VTOL tech that has brought renewed interest and attention to vertical flight. And that was our Next Gen Minute. Now back to the rest of the news. UAVionics to undertake long-range UAS flights at Vantis location. North Dakota's UAS networking facility Vantis will soon be the home of UAVionics BV loss operations thanks to initial FAA approval. The state's interesting UAV test range appears to be shaping up as intended, part sandbox, part testing ground, as more uncrewed aerial vehicle manufacturers head north to develop their systems in the Vantis network. In petitioning the FAA for approval of beyond visual line of sight operations, UAVionics reportedly, quote, demonstrated adequate risk mitigations to satisfy required safety standards for the specified operation within the national airspace system, end quote. That approval means North Dakota has once again added to its burgeoning brand as the place to be for UAV testing. They now expect the next phase of the Vantis project to begin this summer as the network increases its provisions for autonomy at longer range. Vantis currently sports wide-ranging ground infrastructure that helps to relay commands between operators and far-flung aircraft. Thales USA, a partner in the Vantis project, helped to provide a system that can host multiple simultaneous BV loss flights for multiple operators. Trevor Woods, executive director at the Northern Plains UAS test site, said, quote, Vantis was designed and implemented to serve many drone operators across multiple sectors. This first approval is an important milestone for Vantis as a blueprint for widespread commercial BV loss enablement, end quote. And after these messages, Russia amenable to trading stolen satellites for Soyuz parts. Whether you're charting a steady course or pushing for the ceiling, Hartzell Propeller has been elevating flight for over 100 years. It's in our passion for engineering and research. It's in our dedication to testing the limits of performance and creating propellers that are as safe as they are sexy. Now, together with our dedicated family of companies, we're propelling the future of aviation. We are Hartzell Propeller, built on honor. Are you ready to ace your FAA drone pilot knowledge test, get your remote pilot certificate, and start earning money? Well, flying a drone is a great tool that can open up new business opportunities for anyone. Realtor, insurance adjuster, videographer, or commercial weekend drone warrior, you need to fly legally. Whether you're pursuing your initial Part 107 remote pilot certificate or you need a renewal, King Schools has a course just for you. So start learning today at kingschools.com. Welcome back. Russia amenable to trading stolen satellites for Soyuz parts. Roscosmos has indicated it may be willing to return 36 communication satellites Moscow pilfered from OneWeb, the London-based satellite communication company. In exchange for those, Roscosmos seeks to take possession of Soyuz rocket parts currently being held in French Guiana. The 36 purloined satellites were to have departed aboard a Soyuz 2.1B rocket in March 2022. However, following the dissolution of international niceties with the war in Ukraine, the Kremlin issued an ultimatum denying OneWeb permission to launch until the company guaranteed its satellites would not be put to military use. Russian officials further demanded the British government sell its stake in OneWeb. OneWeb refused. Making good on its threat, Russia seized OneWeb's 36 satellites. Comes now January 2023, and OneWeb has forged new partnerships with SpaceX and India Space Agency by which to deliver its remaining satellites to orbit. Subject satellites, however, remain languishing in the custody of their Russian abductors. Roscosmos, conversely, is scrambling to meet its commitment to launch a Soyuz spacecraft to the International Space Station in February 2023 for purpose of retrieving crew members stranded there on Soyuz MS-22. That Roscosmos has found itself in sudden and urgent need of Soyuz components has precipitated discussions with Ariane Space and OneWeb to barter three dozen ill-begotten communication satellites. And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne, and don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching!